All right, welcome to Track versus Track. I'm Jacob Rosdale. I'm joined with by uh, as always, Matt Jensen and Emily Katowski. Thank you. I don't think you know this. You are the first person to break the the men's club. Uh, you are our first female. Oh, uh, seriously? Yeah, uh, something we've I I'm felt so ashamed honored. about. Um, so the, you got into the boys' club, uh, broke it up a little bit. Uh, and we kind of get two guests in one because we're going to be able to see uh, <laughs> your husband moving back and forth maybe a little yeah, bit. Sure. Wait, yeah, sure. Wait, you're on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> He's William, right? So if, if he disagrees with us yes. very strongly, uh, maybe he'll yeah. uh, throw his food at us. Uh, <laughs> we are discussing an album, and it's also the most recent album we've had to talk about. And there's a, there's a oh, cool. on my office wall. I just killed it. So this is the most recent album uh, we've discussed uh, in, in order of release. And it's still like 10. What year did this come out? 2015. Um, 2015. 2015. So not <laughs> still seven years old or whatever. But um, that's more recent than any because usually Matt picks something from the 1960s or uh, I totally he, would have done the same. Yeah, but I I thought maybe I would switch it up a little bit. We need to be pushed out of our comfort zones a little bit yeah. uh, sometimes. And this one, I, I think Matt will attest, uh, kind of pushed us a little bit. Um, it is Jason Isbell's Something More Than Free, which I, I accidentally have the Wikipedia open here, his fifth studio album. Um, okay. Now, Matt and I have been, we, we try not to do too much talk before we hit record, but he has classified this as a country record. Would you call this a country record, Emily? No, no, I would not. No, I definitely would say this is Americana, which is, you know, what it won the, the Grammy for. Um, but also, I mean, I think it just has, it, it's just like rock aspects. Um, there's a little country, there's a little folk, but um, it's not, it's not your typical country that, you know, I would not, I would not classify it as that. <laughs> Counterpoint for Matt. And maybe why I classified it as country through our conversations prior to this is because I don't listen to a lot of country and this is just so far removed from what I listen to. It sounds like what I envision country being. But with that being said, I mean... <laughs> Big fan of these guys, you know. You're welcome. Yeah, these, yeah. This is alt yep. country, right? And um, also, you're going to be surprised. Big fan of, you know, of course, this is the genesis of. Um, there you go. Of Wilco, and that's a little bit more country. Now, this was a this was a guy or a group rather that I've always had a hard time getting into. That's so cool. No. But you know, I appreciate yeah. it. You know, obviously, I appreciate Wilco, and I've seen them multiple times, and. Um, and then here's another group that, uh, you know, I know I'm supposed to like, but have never really. Oh, Whiskey Town. Yeah, that's Ryan yeah, Adams. Right. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, you open up that rabbit hole, too, and there's Ryan there Adams. So, Jeff Tweedy solo stuff. I got it. I just don't listen to it. And um, so with that being said, if this is what country, if this is what Americana sounds like, then I'm in for a treat, I guess, because I think all of these albums that I just showed, or a lot of them anyway, would be kind of classified as that, right? Or alt country. And I don't know. I've really, this has been an interesting listen. And I was going to say, you're lucky <laughs> if you think uh, this is, <laughs> if you think most mainstream country is like this. I did. Um, right. <laughs> it's, I, it's not, I mean, you're lucky that to not be exposed to what real mainstream country is. That said, I exactly. I, I, when you put that in my brain, Matt, I started listening to the lyrics and I, I, I heard there's a lot of talk about the working class. There's talk about my job. Boots. Um, there's talk about God. But I do think it's from a perspective that isn't like the typical I'm I'm a country boy on, on dirt road. I think there's like a, a little bit more reflection to that. Emily, do you agree with that? Yes. Um, yes. 
Absolutely. And I think that it, it hits a lot of those tones, but it comes from a much deeper place. And, you know, it tells just different stories of, you know, a lot of hardships that I think you get in this album, but there's a few celebrations as well. And I think it's, it's very different from say like his Southeastern album, which came right before this, I think like two years prior, which was right after he got sober. And that is a very dark <laughs> kind of album. This has a few lighter tones to it, which I think um, is part of what I like about it. But I also, I also like it just because it was the first album actually where I was introduced to him and it just immediately felt familiar because Jason comes from a part of the South that is close to where my family is from. And so it's that kind of like pocket of like the Tennessee, Alabama line. Um, I mean, I could dig into the fame recording studio and Muscle Shoals Muscle and just like how these amazing artists came from there. But um, my you know, mom's side of the family is from Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi. My, my mom and uh, dad lived in northern Alabama, just very close to where Jason Isbell grew up. And so when, when I first heard this, it just, like, I immediately felt a, a connection. Um, so, yes, it has some, you know, some similar lines that you're going to get in a lot of country albums. But this, I just felt a lot, a lot deeper. And like you said, a lot more reflective. I think it tells better stories in really creative ways. That said, we should probably uh, move on to the album itself, which begins with the song, If It Takes a Lifetime. Uh, it's track number one. And what my, my, the thing I like about Jason Isbell and I clearly haven't listened to as, him as much as Emily, but I, I've dabbled a little bit. Is it's just the songwriting, and I know Matt's not a lyric guy, so that's where I'm like, this is where it's not going to uh -huh. work with Matt as much. But this song in particular has some of the best lines. Like I like when he talks about he doesn't like or doesn't touch wine or beer, but the working for the county keeps him pissing clear. Like that's a good line. Like that makes me chuckle each time, mm -hmm. and. On the more profound side, you have man is a product of all the people he ever loved. Um, I feel like Russ now, like reading off lyrics off the sheet. Um, so that's why I like <laughs> that's why I like Jason. That's why I like um, this track. It's not my top three. It's my number four. But I'm wondering where it ranked for you guys. Wow. Well, I'll piggyback off that because it's my number four, too. Um, Right off the bat, so this song I would say is one of maybe only three. This is a slow album in general, and Jacob will know this, but I typically don't like ballads either. This certainly isn't one of them, though. This is maybe the second most up tempo song on the album. Um, it kind of has a bluegrassy sound to it, actually. This one veers a little bit from country and more to uh, to bluegrass. It's got that kind of easy going. Um, nature to it uh, but it's not like a softy at all i yeah the line that you just said about piss and clear uh that's that's my favorite part of the song too and i like the chorus i like the harmonies in the chorus and um yeah it's 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 a solid song and i actually when i first heard this i was like oh i hope the album is more like this and um well i have it at number four so obviously i i, I like songs a lot less than this one but uh, it's not not my top three but good song words for you emily so it is in my top three. It is in my top three. I think for some of the same reasons that, that Matt just said, it kind of like has a more up, upbeat tone to it. It's kind of like this little sliver of happiness in the like somewhat like heavy um, album. But um, I just think it's a really relatable tune. It's probably why it, it starts the record. There's also a line out, trying not to live inside your telephone. Um, and I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, like you got me <laughs> and why i say i i've been familiar with jason isbell for a long time but a lot of the reasons i don't listen to a lot of his stuff is because it does cut a little too close sometimes i mean i'm not i've never had a drug addiction i don't live i've lived in the south i wasn't growing up in the south or anything but there are some songs where my what like i got really into the his song uh, if we were vampires 
And my wife got so annoyed with me because every time we were in the car and it was on Sirius, I was like, it was like that Seinfeld episode with Desperado. And I'm like, just stare off <laughs> in, into space. Uh, she got so pissed off at me. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to preface with that because like so much, this is the most I've listened to them. And still, there's a few mm -hmm. songs that still cut a little, cut a little too deep. Um, yeah. Track number two, I believe was a single. It is, tw and you have a pooch behind you. Introduce your pooch. Oh. So that's Blue. He is, oh, there he is. Blue, hi. He is, I think, a husky mix. He just turned three. He has one blue eye, one brown. Um, we got him thinking that he would be a, a like, similar, um, like, Australian herd dog to our other two. And then he just kept getting bigger and bigger. So now he's, like, 75 pounds. Um, but he's, he's awesome. He's our child's best friend. He just lets him crawl all over him. Yeah. What's his feelings uh, on Jason Isbell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so track two, I believe was the big single from the album, uh, 24 frames, uh, upbeat. So does Matt like it? That's the question. Uh, yeah, I'll kick it off. Um, it's in my top three. Yeah. It's the obvious hit. It's less country, I would say, than some of the other ones that are, you know, you say it's upbeat. I, I guess it is in terms well, of not in subject matter, maybe, but right. You know, yeah. And, I, and I'm not even talking about that. But in terms of like the tempo, I would say it, it's more upbeat than some, but I would still classify it as a ballad, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, more of a singer songwriter type of, you know, John Prinus. You're going to probably hear that name thrown around a bunch in comparison to this guy. The chorus. Um, yeah. Uh, the chorus has potential. I mean, here's here's the knock I have against it. I think the chorus has um, more potential than what you're actually getting. Um, let's see here. Uh, you know, if God was an architect, now you know something like a pipe bomb ready to blow. See, what I want it to go to is <laughs> pink houses. Ain't that America? You and me. Ain't that America? <laughs> yeah. Something to yeah. see. I want it to like rise. I want the I want the uh, the melodic uh, contour of the song to go up, but it goes down. You know, uh, ready to da 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 da. I wish it went up a little higher. Da 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 da. But then again, that'd be ripping I off agree. the Ellen Camp song. But I just feel <laughs> like it's missing that. And maybe, the, and the song doesn't sound like Pink Houses, but for whatever reason, the chorus I expect it to go into that melodic idea but i like the song a lot super catchy top three for me top three for me too um maybe what you're talking about is something i have in my notes for another song is i think he's a great songwriter great musician uh he can sing better than i can but i do think he has a limited range uh that he writes to so that's probably why he doesn't do yeah. what you're accusing him of doing um but yeah <laughs> it's a catchy hell catchy as hell song uh and it's, it has a film film reference as a title so, right. Are you good, Matt? Oh, the dogs are who left the. T I'm not gonna, not gonna say that, but it's a very dog heavy episode. <laughs> Carry on, guys. I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. Excuse them to the other room. Oh, all good. Hey, so Emily, where's it rank for you? Is it in your top three? It is not, um, but it is number five for me. And um, I think I kind of, I agree with Matt. I think it's a really, creative way to kind of like write about these little scenes from his life I think that was a, like a really good analogy just like the whole 24 frames you know concept but um I do think he kind of held back it seemed a little yeah didn't take it as far as he could go um musical wise that's about all I had I mean I really oh, it's kind of you don't have to go yeah. too in depth on every track or else we'd yeah. be here a long time right <laughs> Matt. I'm sorry, and I apologize. But I, I agree. It's a, it was it was easy listening. It was a good tune. I thought it was creative, but uh, um, yeah, it didn't really take me where some of the other songs did. That's for sure. Did you have this in your top three? I missed that. Five. Oh, yeah. It, it right. was number five. If it went up on that chorus to me, it'd have more hooks than a fisherman's cap, though, because there are a lot of parts to that. You know, I think that that have those tasty little, you know, pop goodness nuggets, but yeah, just it, it's a good, but I like, obviously I like it. It's in my top three. Uh, yeah. Track three is, I mean, if you think 24 frames is a slow one, uh, I don't know where you fall, <laughs> you fall asleep uh, on track three, which, 
which is called Flagship. I mentioned we were vampires yeah. already. That's probably his biggest hit uh, to date. This one felt like a dry run for that, honestly. Uh, very similar subject matter about getting old with someone. And if you're a softie like yeah. me, that, that goes a long way. Um, I, it's my five, though, right. uh, just because there's other tracks I like. But I I mean, I'm I'm not made of stone, guys. This <laughs> you're not you're, you're the flagship of the fleet, man. I am. I'm, that's why I get the top top left square. Uh, <laughs> uh, where does it rank for you, Emily? Uh, this is my number eight. Whoa. I I think okay. it's sweet. Um, I love you know. I do like the story he was telling with us, but I mean that's all I have to say. Like it was sweet. I liked some of the different phrases he used to you know show his his love for this woman. Um, it was a beautiful song, but it was it was simple and that's that's really all it was for me. No real hook. Matt, how low does it go? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of in, in the same ballpark with Emily. I have it just one notch lower. I have it at um, number nine. So here's this song sounds, this actually doesn't sound like very countryish to me. This sounds like contemporary musical theater. And what I really think this song sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like it's from <laughs> Dear Evan Hansen. It sounds like it's from Dear Evan Hansen. Oh. Because, you know, <laughs> She got her shoes shined and then she liked his boots getting shined too. So he went and got those for seven dollars more. She shined he got his shoes. I don't know. It's 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 cute. It really is. It's a cute, pre it's precious. The song is precious. And uh it sounds yeah. like that Evan yeah. Hansen. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Evan Hansen, yeah. Yeah. but there's yeah. this one song that he sings, like she said, da da da. -da. It's, it's the song he's singing about like what his bro he's portraying that the brother was saying all these nice things about his sister, but he's making it because it's really how he feels about her. That's what this song reminds yeah. me of, melodically anyway. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a little, it just borders on the cheese side for me, but it's, you know, it's, it sounds pretty. It's, it's a pretty song. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But there's no real <laughs> hook. I, I get why it's mid. I get why it's mid or lower. Um, so it seems a checkerboard between broken relationship songs and happy relationship songs. Uh, this is a broken one. This is How to Forget. And uh, this is the one I have in my notes that I feel is the weaker vocal. And if the, he was a better singer, someone really could nail uh, this song because it has a good hook. Um, and part of and I also have, this is where in my notes I have, is Americana just what people who don't want to admit they like country music call country music? <laughs> uh, like this is, and it, it could be because Isbell gets put in this category with like Sturgill Simpson and um, the people that are truly like, like country, but they're Democrats. But I don't know. I like this song, but it's not my number. It's still down as my number seven. Who wants to go first? I, I'll go next. I'll, um, I like this song better than Flagship, but I've got it at number six. Um, one of the things I really do like about it, it has this Kodachrome. Oh, yeah. Everybody's everybody's talking at me type of rhythm uh you know the paul simon song kodachrome has got that yep. thing in the background and the, you know Love everybody's that. talking the harry the harry nielsen song it's kind of that accentuated trebly percussion i don't know if it's like a wood block or or something that hit, the, the drummer's hitting like the side of the hi-hat stand or something but it's got this cool little like um uh keeps on chugging feel to it but it's just kind of light and tinkly in the back um the chorus is memorable too. That teach me how to forget. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you're it's... a better singer than he is, mm -hmm. though. You could you could make this a hit. <laughs> okay. I think I like I think I like all the elements going on around the song more than the actual song, though. Like like I said, the percussive nature of that kind of chugging feel, and I like the chorus, but the rest of it, I I don't know. I it, just like the title. It's a bit forgettable. So number six. Well, I had this at my number 10. <laughs> um, really, and I mean, I am I am a lyric girl. Um, I mean, I listen to both, but if you would like, you know, pit me against my husband, he rarely listens to lyrics. And I find that a lot of times that's why I like songs. And then I have to go back and actually listen to, you know, the instrumental part of it. I, I had the same note, Matt, that I, I dig the rhythm guitar in this. I mean, I thought it was, you know, a really cool rhythm that was all the way through. Um, you know, I like the lyrics on this again. And I did switch it, you know, to to go up to number nine just because I, I had to go back and I reread the lyrics. And, um, and I kind of just dug how he talked about, you know, growing up and reflecting on the past. Um, 
I mean, that's what a lot of these songs are. It's kind of like a coming of age, like not necessarily like becoming an adult, but like start adulting, I guess. Track. I lost track. Track five is uh, Children of Children. Do either of you want to have the first stab at that one? Matthew. I'll take this one. Um, it's in my top three. Oh. I would say it's it's the most epic song. Uh, there's two things that I love about this song. Uh, the first thing is it's got this um, dear Mr. Fantasy chug like thing that goes on uh, about 30 or 45 seconds. Listen to it. You'll hear it. It's dear Mr. Fantasy by yeah. Trap. And then there's also at the end this beautiful um, symphonic orchestrated sound that sounds a lot like a something by the verb, like, you know, um, bittersweet symphony or something like that. And I love both of those songs mm -hmm. and it kind of brings them all together, but without being a rip off, you know, of those elements. And, uh, generally I, is this, this is the longest song. Yeah. This is the longest song by a margin. This is like almost six minutes. Yeah. yeah almost six. And it doesn't get boring for me and where it's located in the album. It's just kind of, it, now, if this was at the end of the album, I might I might not like it as much, but I, you know, my attention is still yeah. there. It hasn't, hasn't waned at this point. It's just a, a, a great place to to put it. Um, it doesn't have a lot of catchiness to it other than those, uh, you know, teases of those two songs. But it's just and it's not very country. Maybe that's maybe that's another thing. It's it's, it's got more of a <laughs> kind of a mystical quality to it, you know, um, and I couldn't tell you about the lyrics because I'm not a lyric guy, but just the overall vibe tone sound of it it it's in my top three emily um i did have it in my top three and then i and then i switched so now it's my number four um but a lot of the same things that that matt just said um really i i kind of got like that really cool like 60s 70s like psychedelic rock vibe um especially towards the end i thought it was almost like pink floydish um like towards the end um, I really, I, this is my favorite instrumental song. If I wasn't such a lyric person, this would definitely be in my, my top three. I will tell you about the lyrics though. I mean, again, it's just, it's sad. Um, I think like a lot of, I mean, this is just like where the blues is from, right? Like this, a lot of songs and songwriters that come from this area of the South always have kind of like a sadness or like hardness to them. And I don't think this is any exception. A lot of the stories that he's telling on this album fit right into that. Um, you know, like even if you look at, you know, my, my mom says family was from Memphis. So I grew up listening to like a lot of like Memphis rap too, which is interesting. And like those, those artists are super hardcore just because it's a hard life. It's a hard city. Like I think just this general area of like Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, it's just, it's just hard life um, for a lot of people there. And um, I think that's what this album really touches on is just all of those different, again, like a lot of sad stories, a few glimmers of, of happiness and a few songs, but this was a very sad song. I mean, it's about a girl that is having a child too young and the lyric um, and like generations that are, having children too young that's why it's called children of children um there's a, a lyric that you know just says all the years i took from her just by being born like it's a kind of son's guilt of like doing that to his mom which i just feel heartbreaking um so yeah it could have been top three i put it at four but lo love love this one yeah I don't have much to add other than I feel like I've underrated it based on how much you guys have talked it up. Uh, I have it at my number eight. <laughs> uh, I liked the the instrumental like symphony or whatever you guys called it at the very end. I just put down guitar because that's the thing that stuck out to me. <laughs> uh, I call this the very, the most Neil Young of the track. It has like a harvest harvest yeah, sound uh, to his vocal to it at least. But um yeah, I guess maybe because it didn't have, uh, it wasn't as catchy as some of the other tracks, and I'm I'm a slave to the hook. Speaking of which, uh, track number six, "The Life You Chose," is in my top three because I think it has a heck of a chorus. It's my favorite chorus. Um, also, talking about favorite lines, I try not to do this too much throughout the album, but. I do like the idea that he got lucky when he finished school by losing three fingers to a faulty tool. 
Uh, and that's why yeah. he thinks he's better than whoever this girl is with. <laughs> she should yeah. be with me because I lost three fingers, uh, three fingers. Or, 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 this is probably more accurate uh, to, <laughs> to what he is. Um, but, but he's like, are you sure he loves you? Like I loved you. I, 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 I got rich on a settlement. Yeah. <laughs> but I like it. It's in my top three. Uh, it's the one. I, it's just kind of, I like how he calls her kid in the chorus too. Like, uh, yeah. Like, it's just kind of like a little, it's kind of sexy. Um, yeah. I like it. It sounds like you guys, it's lower on it because it's similar to another song, but you guys do you. Emily? Well, I mean, I already told you what I, <laughs> about oh. this since I thought that's what we were talking about earlier. But um, yeah, this is, I do like the Sylvia Plath reference in this. Um, and then I, I do like, you know, just the main, are you living the life you chose or the life that chose you? I was kind of reflecting on that and like, what's the difference between the two? And um, so I did some thinking on it. But again, this was my um, number 10. Should have chose seven finger Carl. That's what I'm going to call the character of this song. Where's it for you, Matt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Emily and I have the same logic on this. I have it at number seven. So this is just one tick below um, how to forget, which I had at number six. You know, it's it's very similar in feel. Uh, it's more of an upbeat one than, you know, you got the strumming of the guitar. Now, this may this may be a reference that that you're not aware of, but it sounds exactly to me, at least the, the verses of the song, like Heavy Things by Fish. It's got that things have fallen down on me kind of vibe to it. But I love the chorus, you know, is this the life you chose you? Like a da 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 I, yeah, um, I, I, I dig the song, but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a middle of the road track to me. And I just like it maybe just to, I mean, how to forget in life you chose. I could flip flop those two, but I have it for number seven. All yeah. right. We're past the halfway point uh, and we get to the title track, something more than free, which I, I, this is the one where I was like, this is what Matt's talking about when he's talking about country, <laughs> but I, I yeah. think it's kind of, it's, it's more, I don't want to say he's pitying the the protagonist, but I, I think he no. is looking at him in a way removed other than a typical country song would look at him because he's he's so tired from work and he can't go to church. <laughs> <laughs> Every hammer needs a nail. Like that, there you go. Yeah. I mean, I but I, this is where like am I now am I projecting what I like because I want to like this guy. Do I think this is a different than a typical country song? I don't know. I, it's in my middle. It's my number six. But um, I really liked it before you put you incepted this. It's just based basic country into my head, Matt. I'm sorry. It might have been in my top three at one point, but now it, it got knocked down. This is a song where I'm really listening to the lyrics. And I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a guy who pays a lot of attention to lyrics. There's like three songs and they're all like at the middle to the end of the album that I'm really paying attention to. So there's a, you know, a story here. The guy, he's. He's, you know, he's thanking God for the work, though, but he comes home at the end of the night. He's too freaking lazy to take his clothes off and put it in the freaking hamper. He just leaves, <laughs> him, leaves him at the door, you know, but he but he's, you know, and he's too freaking tired on Sunday to go to church. But, you know, like a hammer needs a nail. He uh, he's 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 thankful to have the work. Yeah, this is this is just too cheesy for me. I uh, it's it's pretty enough. And I'm really listening to the lyrics, you know, obviously um, it's telling a story, but I, yeah, this, this to me is like what I think of as modern country. I have it at number 10. Emily. So I have this at my number six. Um, yeah. I probably get a little bit more of a perspective. I totally, you know, see how, you know, there's, it fits in with a lot of, you know, country genre. Um, I, I did read that he, he wrote this about his father. Um, and he really was, you know, just had, he was a very hard worker. I can't remember the job that he had, but, um, you know, church in this pocket of the South is, is a big deal. Um, my, it, it really, it made me think of my grandfather in, in Memphis who, you know, uh, worked for a furniture um, store for most of his life. And when we, he retired from that, he went and worked for like a TV repair store. And so he was delivering TVs into his seventies. And like when my grandma just wanted him to like retire, um, but they, he was never too tired to go to church. So that just made me wow. think, I'm like, what is this guy doing where he's like so tired to go to church? 
Um, so I, I mean, I, I saw some similarities between the guy that he's talking about and my own family. I get it. Um, it is, does get kind of cliche. Um, I do like the, the premise of, you know, that this guy is thinking that his reward is going to come after this lifetime. And so that's what he's working for. And so, um, that's, that's what I did like about it. I think it's a, it's a cool song. Um, but it's kind of right in the middle of the road for me, number six. Track number eight is another story song, I'd say. Um, Speed Trap Town. Slower, but I, I suspect this is one of the slower ones Matt might like. No? No? No, I, I, I no. don't like one particular. You don't like it at all. I mean, it's it's another one of these story types. It, it's got a very Springsteen, you know. I was going to Bruce is way of telling yeah. something. And this I is funny because mm -hmm. em, Emily, you were saying that um, the, uh, the the previous song was was kind of a, an homage to to Jason's father. See, for whatever reason, I was thinking that his father was like a sheriff or something that's now dying of cancer, which I think is you know isn't that kind of what the story is? And but, he's yeah. pulling over, yeah. pulling over women in the speed trap town, and and the son's really like having these thoughts like how he hated his dad, but now that his dad is is dying in the hospital bed, he's take he's sneaking in drinks to the high school basketball game on a Thursday night. And uh, yeah, it's, it, I like it more than, than something more than free, but it, it kind of still sits in that wheelhouse of, of country to me. And so I have it at number eight. Uh, I thought the Bruciness of it would bump it up a little bit. Um, I talked about one of the things I didn't like about Bruce is that he never has like a, a motif or a, like, like this was running, reminding me of like that, whatever by the river, like when we did, um, born to run that meeting by the river song, but oh, I didn't like that song because it didn't have like a chorus and this doesn't really have a chorus, but it has a phrase it keeps returning to. It has like a structure. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I, I, I really dug this song. This is, I mean, it, it is kind of slow. I'm not, again, I'm not made of stone. I got a dead dad. Yeah. This is in my top three. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> um. Again, I, I kind of have this along with, with Matt. This is my number seven. So match. um, I think, I don't know who he's talking about in this. I don't think it's his own dad. I think it's just a story that he's telling, just that he's telling. Um. I don't think it's specific to the South. This could be any small town, which is what just made me think of Springsteen as well. Like this, this easily could have been any small town across the United States. So I think it's really relatable. Um, but it seems, it seems like it's been done. Um, but again, I mean, I, I felt it. I mean, there are aspects that I, you know, definitely could um, see myself in and my, my upbringing and childhood, but, um, yeah, number seven. You guys were both raised in too big of towns. You were raised in a city, Matt. You're a city kid. Yeah. You don't know what it's like in this hey. in Attica, Iowa. Town with 800 people. So <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty small. All right. Um, track number nine, Hudson Commodore. Again, another like he's really doing the the thing where he writes about a person and not not always about himself because it's about a, a lady who lived. This is a sub subset of uh, tracks going back to I, I don't mind. I, I could have made a Taylor Swift reference. I'm not going to because I know Matt won't get it. Um, where is it <laughs> ranked for you? Where is it ranked for you, Matt? Uh, I have this one at number five, and um, to me, this one kind of strays from the contemporary country and has more of a folk sound to it, particularly like that arpeggiated, um, finger-picked guitar part during the verses, and I freaking love the chorus. Just wanted to run, and the harmonies just like come out of nowhere. Yes. Um, you know, I, I wish this album as a whole had more piano, because I went back Emily and Jacob. And I listened to the album uh, previous to this after I'd listened to this album, maybe five or six times. Cause I knew the one before this got all the fanfare, right? Like that was, that, that was right. like his ultimate statement. And I think people put this album in high regards, but maybe that's the one that they're like, that's the gold standard. And this one maybe is like the silver or whatever, but um, that's, that album is, has piano all over it. And like, he, he just dropped the ball on this whole album. And I think a lot of these songs would be elevated with some more organ. There's only a couple songs. I think there's one song in particular that we haven't talked about, 
where, where there's noticeable organ. But yeah, I want that in my Americana. I want piano. You know, when I, when I think of Americana, yeah. I think of, I think of the band, you know, and those Bob, those early Bob yeah. Dylan electric albums, you know, that's Americana to me. And, and you know, all those first yeah. three or three band albums, I want to hear that wall of sound of, of, of key, swirling organs and, and, and pianos along with, you know, your other instrumentation, stuff like that. But I love that chorus. And uh, I would put it higher if there was just a little bit more meat and potatoes to the arrangement of the song. But that chorus, man, that chorus might be the best vocal part in any of these songs but uh you know yep. based on the whole you know the whole performance i'm putting that at number five emily i have this in my top three um just because that chorus is badass and i love my harmonies and i think also you know one of the reasons why i love a lot of these songs or just this album is it's in my range and so i can sing the hell out of it um and i and i really like it um but I, I really like your, your comment about just like the difference between these two albums and the, the instrumental part of it is, I mean, they were recorded in two different studios, I think. Um, and where, and I love that you bring in Levon Helm because he recorded in the fame, the fame recording studio in Muscle Shoals where Isabel grew up. Like I see a lot of similarities between the band and that persona um, and Isabel, maybe not so much in, like you see it in little like glimmers, like in this song, which is why it's in my top three. I love it. Um, but I agree. I, I wish, I wish he kind of like went for it more, um, in those, in those aspects, but I, I love this song. It, it reminds me of, you know, my, my great aunt Emil who flipped off the entire family reunion back in 1996 you know it, it reminds me of my great aunt Nadine who dated Johnny Cash like you no know, so it's that same you know era of just like feisty kind of rebellious southern women um I see you know parts of myself in it you know just for the same reasons and I don't I love this song top three yeah. It's it's my number ten. Uh, I feel bad I, <laughs> <laughs> again. I'm like I must be listening to it for different things than you guys. Uh, but yeah, that chorus is good. Um, I, I think if it was higher in the album, it honestly would be higher ranked for me because I think by this time, when I every listen, I'm I'm I've already given a lot of my high numbers away, uh, and it's hard to reevaluate because I'm looking at the bottom three, and they're they're the the last three tracks of the album are my my last three ranked because i think i just i <laughs> i i like so many of the other songs that i'm like oh i i ha i can't rank these any lower so these later songs have to be my 10 11 and 9 um and that's what 11 is uh palmetto rose it's my bottom track it is the second to the last and i i knew matt would like this one because it's bluesy but uh it <sighs> I don't know. It, this one just feels like scraps to me. It feels like three different <laughs> songs smushed together. And every one of those aspects are, might be good, but I don't think the bluesy thing goes into the chorus, goes into the bridge. And they feel like three different songs. And that's the only reason, since I like the craft and all the other songs, that's why this one's at the bottom. Oh. I, and also, this is the one that feels the most country to me because this is unabashed. I love the South. This is a, a Southern lo love song. Matt, tell me how much of an idiot I am. No, no, no. I, I'm not going to speak on the lyrics at all, because to be honest with you, I don't. Is, is Palmetto Rose a drink? Is that a cocktail? Or I something? assume so. And the okay. iodine state is no. South Carolina. And the iodine state. I will tell you. So a Palmetto Rose, they take the fronds from the palm tree. So like the leaves from the palm tree. And they actually like make it into like a rose, like a, oh. a flower that and like. And it's a thing, it's like what, you know, people on the street might, you know, like you buy a rose in New York or wherever, like you would buy a palmetto rose. Like, hmm. yeah. I like the song better when I thought it was about a drink. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to bump it out. Of, a drink palmetto rose. <laughs> bump it out of your top three now. I need to, I might need to bump it out of my top three now. Cause yeah, no, I don't like that. Uh, no, it's in my top three. And, and Jacob, what you didn't like about the song and I totally get it, how it's, you know, three kind of half-ass or uncompleted songs put together. <laughs> but to me, that that's what I love about the Beatles, man. I mean, well, I a day know. in the life. You never get, you never give me your day money. And then, you know, when we did, when we, uh, our very first ranking, Emily, was uh, um, 
McCartney's Ram and, you know, Uncle Albert Admiral Halsey, you know, it's got and, and the backseat of my car. They're just fragments of songs put together. Paul's notorious for that. Right. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And for this song, I think it really does. That opening section has a very ZZ top style, like, you know, it's gritty. It sounds nothing like the chorus, though. The chorus has another one of these like big bombastic har harmony sections, kind of like um, Hudson Commodore when, you know, she wanted to run section. So the chorus has this big bombastic gang like harmonies. And then the ending, the third section is this like beautiful orchestrated, um, you know, kind of like I talked about the Verve Bittersweet Symphony when I talked of Children of Children, like that, the end of this song has like elements of the end of Children of Children. So it kind of brings all three of those things that I like, uh, you know, the grittiness, it's a rocker, it's got great harmonies and it's got these beautiful arrangements. So yeah, it's a, it's a top three for me. And I believe there's some profanity in this song which gives it extra points. I, I think so too. <laughs> I think if he, maybe he did uh, a goofy is... voice like Paul McCartney does. I would have known <laughs> it was intentional. I don't know if it's intentional. He needed to do like a, a British accent uh, or, or go totally Southern. Oh, sorry, Emily, I didn't mean to interrupt. Where is it ranked for you? No, you're good. So this is my top three. Um, again, like a lot of, a lot of the same reasons. Well, but two um, <laughs> Initially, yes. I initially I really did just dig the chorus and it's probably what I was just like listening to over and over again I really liked you know the iodine state and um but then when I really did start listening more to the lyrics um again it's just a bunch of like really like many interesting stories from South Carolinians and um I do like the reference you know to the Palmetto Rose um but the the rhythm guitar, I I said the same thing, Matt, ZZ Top for sure at, at the at the top, and then um, yeah, I just I love that chorus. This is this is top three, yeah. Doesn't it have I like a it. swing your beer? Da, da, yeah. da, 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 in the eye. That's why I thought it was right. about drinks. That's why I thought yeah. Palmetto yeah. Rose was a drink. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. I thought they were toasting, you know, South Carolina. Oh, well, uh, bringing the album to a close, uh, another slow, slow one um, to a band I love to a band that I loved. I want to get the title correct um, is what it sounds like. It's an ode to a band that Jason was a fan of, played with a little bit and broke up. Um, pretty personal, very specific. Um, I usually don't rank things based on universal, how universal it is or not, but uh, this one isn't very universal, but I think we've all had bands we like, but this one's very specific. Uh, maybe because it doesn't have a hook or whatever, it's it's my number nine. And also it's at the very end of the album. Um, I don't know where else I'd put it, um, but um, yeah, nine it is for me. Emily. I had this at 11 um, and maybe it is because it was just at the very end, but also it just, I didn't connect with it as musically as I did with, with the others. Um, I like the premise that like, I mean, you don't really hear a lot of like love songs for like for other bands, which I thought was kind of a cool idea, but um, yeah, it didn't really do it much for me. Number 11. Number 11 for me too forgettable that's that's all i have written about that in my in my talking points just kind of forgettable. <laughs> and yeah. i was telling jacob maybe prior to you coming on emily uh right before we we recorded um i think i've spent the most time listening to this album than any of the track versus track albums and uh <laughs> my appreciation for this as a whole has just really grown yeah but it kind of it kind of ends on a turd i mean it's just really <laughs> kind of, <laughs> Just kind of a downer because I love the penultimate song and Jacob and I have this thing where I, where we usually rank the penultimate song as like the worst song in the album. And, uh, you know, obviously for Jacob, that's that stayed true for this one. Right. But um, yeah, yeah, but usually I'm the end, the I feel last, wrong. Right. Well, the last the last song on the on the album is usually like a, a heavy hitter, you know, like it it's the last taste in your mouth before you flip the album over or turn the turn the, the the stereo off you know and it's like it's kind of a downer because you, you, i i really felt if if there had been one more banger on this i i may still buy this album though i didn't think i would i i kind of am been It'll, enjoying yeah i know it's crazy um, it's a hard one to find on vinyl i tried a few times oh, okay um, so i don't know. think it's in it's i don't think it's pressed uh all of his other things are pretty easy to find though so i, I found that odd um before we reveal our top three, I had a couple questions for Emily. Is this your favorite of Isabel's albums? 
I will be completely honest. Um, it's the first that I listened to of him, and I really only listen to like a handful of other songs that like come on, you know, when I have you know Pandora, or Spotify, or something going. Um, so yes, I mean okay. it. It just kind of came out at the right time, I think, in my life, and I remember when I did start listening to it, and I don't even remember how or why, um, but I ran across it just kind of at the right time. I was living, you know, on the farm in Colorado, so I think that's probably another reason why I connected with it. I mean, I was working my ass off every day and um, kind of in that same, like, mid to late 20s, early 30s, um, and um, I remember just, like, touching base with some of my family in, in Tennessee and just telling them to listen to it. But yeah, I mean, it's my favorite because it's, it's the only one that I, I really listened to all the way through of his. Every hammer needs a nail. I'm sure that's how you felt. Um, have you seen him live? I, I'm, I've missed him. Like I've had close calls, but I've not seen him live. Have you? I have not, which is crazy because he went to Red Rocks. Um, it might have been right when we were moving because we moved in 2018 um, and I was going to Red Rocks, you know, like at least five times a summer to see different bands. And I, I never, you know, it never worked out to see Isbell. Um, now, maybe that I'm, you know, when I was in Nevada, <clears throat> it was like four hours to Salt Lake City, five hours to Reno. And then we had COVID in the middle of everything. And so I'm kind of just now kind of getting back to, um, going to see some live shows. I saw Mason Jennings in Des Moines a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're heading to St. Louis in a couple of weeks to see some, some bands. Um, so, I mean, I'll still see him. I'm sure. Hopefully I'll be somewhere close. He does a lot of festivals and he's usually headlining yeah. a festival on the night I'm not going. Like it's always a, like one of those deals <laughs> where it's so close. All right. So let's, uh, as our guest, Reveal your top three. Three one. So number three, um, I had Palmetto Rose. Uh, number two was If It Takes a Lifetime. And number one is Hudson Commodore. I will go. Uh, my number three was 24 Frames. Number two, Bee Trap Town. And number one was uh, The Life You Chose. Again, I'm the outlier, I assume, because I know roughly what mats are. Go, sir. Number three, 24 frames. Number two, Palmetto Rose. Number one, Children of Children. Oh. All right, Emily, I didn't warn you about this. Uh, we also end on um, a picker wheel. So uh, it's going to land on a category. It's just going to give us a talking point to end the show on. Brought to you by Disney Plus. Pickles. Yeah. Do you see your pickles? Yourself. Protect yourself from shingles. Oh, shingles. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Emily, wow, he, this has that. nothing to do with us. This all this is the one Matt likes. Um, I'm going to use a random number generator to pick a number between one and a thousand and one, and we're going to see if Matt owns the album off of uh, the list a thousand and one albums you must hear before you die. The number is six hundred and thirty nine. I do not. I, I, I don't know if you're going to uh, own this one, Matt. Um, 639 is a New Order album. Technique. Be right back. Oh. All right, Matt. New Order Technique. He owns it. I was saying, I don't know if you could hear it. It's not wow. the New Order album I was expecting to be on. I mean, it, I mean, yeah, I see you have it. Well, that's a, yeah. That's the one. Movement was the one I was expecting to be on the list. Yeah, you have the... How often do you listen to those records? Never. <laughs> should we do a new order? Uh, wow. <laughs> we should do a new order album next. Sure. I, I mean, <laughs> if I had my druthers, it would be a Joy Division because I... Uh, yeah, I do like Joy. Yeah. I don't know oh, them very well. Picker Wheel has not stumped me yet. No, not yet. Well, Emily, thank you for joining us. Yes, um this is super fun yeah, yeah. um uh, thanks it, for it was, it was tough i mean i think uh i would have gone the like 60s 70s route too and that would have been fun but what i had a really hard time doing was like picking an album that i knew like all the way through 
because, you know, growing up listening to all those, you know, with my dad, of course, we just like listened to greatest hits. And so it was hard even to just like find one that I was like, this would be a good album to just like listen to and analyze. But I'm glad that we did this. It was super fun for me. Well, we don't have a good way to end the show. So usually um, we just kind of awkwardly wave. But I want to thank people for watching. I like <laughs> and subscribe. Listen to uh, New Order's Technique. And uh, I think we all kind of, we all recommend Jason Isbell something more than free. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thanks, guys.